good evening, everyone. I would like to now give the word to Martin Michelmeyer, a former Debian project leader. Um, so th thanks for coming. It's really, it's really nice to see so many people here to remember Ian. Um, the free software community was, was shocked, shocked and, and saddened um, to hear um, that Ian had passed away um, just before the, uh, the, the beginning of the, the new year. Um, Ian Murdoch is, of course, best known as the, the founder of Debian, as the, the father of Debian. And for those who don't know, uh, Ian is the Ian in Debian. Um, and in the name, we will always honor Ian. Um, I, I think one, one of the things um, while thinking about what to say, um, one of the things that I just had to think about is, is how much Debian and, and Ian's work has influenced our lives. I mean, I can see a lot of people in here who have been involved in Debian, and I know many of you are Debian users. And, and even though I wasn't uh, involved in the Debian project when it was started, uh, when I think about it, Debian has in some way or another shaped half of my life. Now, my life would be quite different without Debian. Um, so this tweet, is something that really resonates with me. Um, and maybe, you know, things wouldn't be quite as bleak, but, but I think everyone here can agree that Debian, that Ian Murdoch, you know, really had a big impact on, on our lives in, in so many different ways. Um, and there are, there are a lot of good things to say about Ian. Um, I, th I think I'm going to highlight um, three. Um, the first one is that Ian really had a, a foresight about creating a project uh, based on community. Um, so I have a, a number of quotes from Ian that, that really show like, you know, what he was thinking. Um, and a, a lot of those things are, are very hard to understand now because they seem so obvious. Um, but you have to see it in historical context. You know, back then, a Linux distribution was quite a new thing. And it was done, you know, by like a few people. And Ian really said, you know, we want to do it in, in an open way. We want to do it in, in a way that the community, that the people, different people are involved. And, and I think that, that really shows a, a lot of foresight. I, I really like these quotes. Um, so that was 10 years um, after, uh, De after Ian started Debian. He, and he said that the biggest contribution, you know, it's, it's not the software, but it's, it's really about how the software is created. That when he started the project, he started the project you know, with community built in. That was always the idea um, that he sent out to do it that way intentionally. It, it wasn't, oh, I'm going to start a project, and suddenly it became a success, and all those people came. He actually you know, designed the project in a way to allow for that. Um, and, and I particularly like the quote at the bottom, where, where he says, you know, if you remove community from open source or free software, it's just software. And, and I think that's so true for Debian. I mean, when I think about Debian, uh, I mean, all, all the distros at the end of the day, you know, it's all the same stuff. You take a Linux kernel, you take some other stuff, you throw it together. Sure, there are technical differences, but what's so unique about Debian is the way it's developed. 
the, the processes we have in place and, and the social contract and the philosophy behind it. And if you remove all of those things from Debian, it would just be bits of software, but it wouldn't be Debian. And, and I think that's remarkable, you know, that, that Ian created such a thing. And, and, and later on, Ian tried to bring, you know, that community idea to Solaris. And, and I, I don't know details, but I would imagine that it's much harder to add community later on instead of having it built in. And it's interesting when people think about Debian, you know, what Debian, you know, the innovation that Debian brought, a lot of people think about the packaging system, and, and it's true. I mean, just imagine, you know, the old days where you would just unpack tapos, you wouldn't know which files belonged where or to which packages. You couldn't upgrade stuff independently. So the packaging system was a true innovation. But again, Ian sees things in a very different way. So he says, you know, it, it's not about, you know, technical stuff. It's all about collaboration. You know, the packaging system, what that allows is to have experts who each maintain their components and to integrate that into one system. And, and I think that's, that's a really, uh, you know, innovative idea of how to structure things. And, and when I think about Debian, you know, I don't think about a CD-ROM. Um, when I think about Debian, I think about community. That's really what, what defines Debian, thanks to Ian. Um, and Brandon Robinson, a, a former Debian project leader who worked for Ian for many years, I think he also said it very well, that it's, it's about individual empowerment in a social environment. So he said it's about taking responsibility while sharing responsibility. I, I think that's a, a really, I think that, that sums it up very well. Um, and that's all thanks to Ian's foresight. I think the, the, the second thing I want to highlight is just the, the sheer humility that Ian showed. Um, you know, a lot of leaders these days are, you know, leaders for life. Leaders who say, I make the decisions. I know what's best. But if you, if you read this tech, oh, um, and just, again, to put things in, like, a lot of the stuff I just said about community, you may say, oh, gee, that sounds a lot like open source is being done today. You know, what's new about that? But you have to, you have to realize, you know, it's over 20 years ago that, that Ian started Debian. Um, you know, it might be obvious for us now, but it certainly wasn't obvious when Ian started the project. Um, and, and this is actually a printout of the announcement that Ian made, and he had to print it out because his email quota was 500K, so he couldn't save it. So not 500 megabyte, 500K. Um, and, and I'm sure some of you in this room weren't even born you know, when Ian had his ideas. So the second thing is, as I mentioned, the humility that Ian displayed. So when you read this quote, I mean, obviously he doesn't talk about it, but when you read this quote, he doesn't say, you know, I know what's best for users. I'm going to give you what you need. He says, we need different people from different backgrounds. We need users to be involved in developing the software. And, and I think, you know, being a leader and showing and, and telling people, I don't know everything, you know, I don't have the answers. We need all those people. I, th I think that, that really shows character. And, and everyone I speak to about Ian, they say the same, you know, how down to earth he was. And, and I think we're going to see those in the pictures in, in the video later on. Just, you know, he was, he really liked interacting with people. He was just such a nice person to talk to. Um, and, and there are some really interesting anecdotes. So someone talked about, um, there is a blog post about how he had an interview with Ian, and, and Ian said, hey, let's go hiking. 
Um, I mean, that's, that's just very, very interesting. Um, and also, someone told me that he emailed Ian to ask for a, a short video to show at the Linux meeting, and, and he got a prompt reply with a video. So uh, again, I, I think that's something really to admire. And, and the third thing um, is actually related, um, that Ian didn't, didn't set out to be uh, a leader for life of Debian. He, he didn't say, you know, I'm going to be in charge forever. Um, he actually said, you know, I want to design the project in a way that the project doesn't need me, you know. And, and that was his, you know, uh, test for success. Can he step away um, while the project still um, goes on and, 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 and flourishes? Um, and, and, and again, I, I think that, that shows such a strength um, such leadership. I think that's true leadership um, if you can actually say, you know, the project doesn't need me. Because um, I see a lot of leaders who, you know, cling on to a project even though maybe they lost interest, maybe they, you know, they, they don't have the time, or maybe they're not the right person. But Ian was different. You know, he said the project should exist without me. So, so I, I think there are so many things to admire. Um, so I, I, th I think initially um, there was an idea of having a, a signing book, um, but in Debian we like to do things in a, in a virtual way. Um, so there is an email address um, where you can send your thoughts and your condolences, um, and they will be shared with the family. Um, and if the family wishes, uh, uh, they will also be published. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Laura and Anna from the, the Debian team who organized everything behind the scenes. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Valesio Brito who put together the, the video we're gonna show. Um, and that's based on photos that various people submitted. Um, um, and also, in the next edition of the Debian Project News, uh, there's going to be a highlight about Ian's life uh, with a, a lot of links um, to blog posts that, that people have uh, written about Ian. So if, if you wish, you can, you can read some more about you know, uh, personal anecdotes and, and other things that, that people have shared. <clears throat> so again, if, if you want to express um, your, your thoughts, you, you can do that um, un, until the, the middle of next week. Um, and e even though this is about Ian, um, and we, we should remember Ian, I, I think it's also a good time um, to, to just reflect. It seems that we have lost a, a lot of great minds recently. Um, so please take some time to thank the people you admire most um, while they're still around. And with this, um, so we have a short video prepared.
Thank you for coming.